What's the optimal diet that people can be going on to both lose weight and get healthy? Right. It's a great question. And a lot of great minds have been working on that question for a many, many decades. Unfortunately, we are unable to do the kind of science that would give us an absolute answer. This is the best diet, end of discussion. We have factions in the so-called human nutrition world of so-called experts. And there are some people saying a diet based on plants is great. There are others saying we're omnivores and we should eat a mixed, balanced diet and just avoid the processed junk and excess sugar and everything will be fine. There are people saying, oh, no, no, what you must do is avoid carbohydrates at all costs. And um, also you need to be in ketosis all the time. And yeah, so there are all these ideas. And, and what I'm what I'm getting at there, Dave, is that their ideas because precisely because we're unable to do the science to absolutely answer the question. And so people cherry pick what they want to pick out of the stuff that approximates science on human nutrition and come up with any theology they want to. So that's the disclaimer. What I have done to put together what's basically my opinion, and it's an opinion shared by a lot of learned people these days as well, is I have taken everything in the ring-fenced area of so-called human nutrition, so-called science, and I've put it to the side. And I've gone, if I look at anthropological evidence, actual hard evidence collected actually scientifically using actual science, and I look at comparative anatomy and physiology, and then I go to the anecdotes around what happens to people when, in general, they follow a certain dietary pattern in general. And all of that leads me to the opinion that the most optimal diet for a human being is the one that's appropriate to your species as per your genetic gift, as per four and a half million years of positive and negative selection pressures, the one that your organ systems and biological systems are designed to run on. And for me, that's the carnivore diet. What? You mean all meat and fat and no plants and stuff? Yes, that's what I mean. Right. And... um so, I mean, for someone who has never considered this before, that would be quite shocking to them to hear um, a professor say that someone who's been in this field for so many years to say, well, just eat meat. Mm. Um, when you're raised your whole life to believe that plants are what gives us nutrition and, and um plants are, are the goodness why is the nutrition more optimal in a carnivore or a meat-based diet than it would be in a plant-based diet yeah so for me the clear pointers around that one are what happens to a person's body at large or on average i should say what is the what is the response in this group of people who have reported following this lifestyle under the assumption that we believe them that they've been following the lifestyle they say they have? So we've got a bunch of anecdotes. And a lot of people say, well, anecdotes aren't science. Well, great. We don't have any science. Um, and also, actually, a series of anecdotes collected under a certain set of disciplines is, in fact, data. And that's what science is based on. But that's for another day. It, basically, what we get by way of reports back from people who subscribe or report to us that they subscribe to the carnival lifestyle is that their lives change for the better. Their health changes 
massively, vastly, hugely for the better, there are almost no even remotely negative anecdotes to speak of at all. Nobody that said that diet wasn't for me, it didn't work for me, I had problems X, Y, or Z. And the ones that are saying they had problems are people that get basically digestive problems because they decide a good idea is not only to go carnival, but to do that tomorrow. Bam. Change your diet overnight hugely. Please don't do that, people. Give your body six to eight weeks to adapt to a dietary change by changing your diet slowly. Please don't change your diet overnight. So take those people out. There's almost nobody left that says, no, no, this is a terrible, terrible diet. And a lot of people say, well, there's no long-term reports. Well, that's not true either. I can name you oh, half a dozen people I know have been carnivore for multiple decades, up to and including a woman who I'm told lives in Canada. I thought she lived in the States. She's Canadian. She's a rancher up there. She's been carnival for 66 years or something. So clearly there are some long-term. Okay, that's just one. Well, how about Rick Rodriguez? 40 years. Um, myself approaching the 10-year sort of range. Sean Baker, I think, has been around Carnival for about 12 years, I think. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. I think that's about what it is. Um, Anthony Chafee, I think, is a 20-year-plus Carnival. I could go on all day, but the, the point is there are now, I suspect, millions of people following this dietary way of nutrition, this way of living and, and following. And I know that because that's how many people are following the various channels around the place that talk about carnivorous lifestyle. Um, and let's assume that most of them are involved at some level. There are, there are plenty of opportunities for people to say, oh, no, this was terrible diet. My leg fell off or something. Nobody's legs falling off here. You look at a vegan diet or a diet even based largely on plant material, and that is not what you're going to hear. You're going to hear 84% of vegans quit. Within five years of starting a vegan diet, and out of those 84% that quit, 90% of those people cite catastrophic health failure, born of nutrient deficiency, as the reason for it. So for me, it's clear which diet is associated, it seems, with the best outcomes for people in the real world, over here in the objective reality in which we find ourselves. The one that really has very little to do with so-called science, and especially not nutrition science.